Here is a deep time exercise that brings us into imagined conversation with beings of the future. This is one of those processes that we call a standalone exercise because it can be done by itself with almost any number of people up to I've done it with 150 people if the room is big enough and arranging them in a double circle. Double circle, indeed, is the name of this exercise in the book Coming Back to Life. We now call it the seventh generation. In this exercise, we are asked to use our moral imagination to journey to a point outside of time where we can meet the future seventh generation and converse together. Half the group takes the role of the future generations, the seventh generation, and half play the role of their very selves in this point of time. Because there's extended reference in this exercise to the great turning, it is good to offer this exercise after you've presented and gotten people used to the concept of the great turning. When you do it as a standalone exercise, you will precede it by an explanation and discourse on the great turning. I love this exercise. I find it inspiring, and so have countless people over the last half dozen years. It originated actually in a dream that John Seed had in Japan. Since then, it's changed form hugely, but it still has that same supposition that we can be in communication with the future beings that in the very realest of senses, they are inside us. The future is within us. This is the double circle or the exercise for the seventh generation. It means that all of you who are on the outside circle looking in, you are your present day selves. And those of you who are on the inside looking out, you are the a human of the seventh generation from now, roughly 200 years. <clears throat> You're living in 2205. If you have done this practice before and are in the same position, you may want to switch. Generations that are separated by 200 years, people living now and people living on uh, in the seventh generation in the future, how are we going to meet? Because we're going to have some interchanges. We are going to meet by going to a point outside of time by virtue of the power of our imagination and our sounding. We are going to sound that seed syllable ah, which stands for all that has not yet been said, the voiceless ones, and we're going to ride that sound to a point outside of time where we can meet. If, if after that, the person in front of you, you will see, is separated from you by a couple hundred years in real time. But right now we're able to communicate. When we get there, the future generation one that's you on the inside circle, will have something to say to the present day one. And it includes a question that the present day being will answer. Now you present day ones on the outside, you are going to know that these words and this question come directly from the heart of the future being. But you will hear it in my voice. And you will answer out loud, talking to that person. Then you will hear me uh, ask you to draw to a close, and then the future one stands. You take your leave, you stand, and you move one seat to the right.
and the present day ones, you stay put. Then there's another conversation. The future ones again have something to say, a question to ask. It'll again be in my voice, and again the present day being will answer out loud. As the present day being speaks, you future ones, you will just listen. That happens one more time. Then you will hear me invite the future being to speak. At that point, the present day one just listens. And that's it. Then we'll come back to real time. Now let me say this. There are a couple of assumptions upon which this process rests. One of them is that there will be humans 200 years from now. Another is they have cultural memory of what happened in our time. Now this is saying a lot. This means they're not scattered in caves. That they have cultural institutions capable of carrying the memory, a hell of a lot of information about what happened at the beginning of the 21st century. There's also the implication that, that if there are humans living in that complex culture with continuity of cultural memory, these are self-sustaining societies, that they, they have survived the breakup of the industrial growth society and that they are living sustainably. We don't need to know their uh, level of health. We don't need to know how many there are. We don't need to know what their technology is, their transportation, their food. We don't know, need to know any of that for this process. We don't need to have figured out how long it took. A couple of years, a couple of wars, what have you. We don't need to know the way the Industrial Growth Society broke up. But we know enough about it to know that it can't last two more centuries. So that this... This human culture that has cultural memory of our time is sustainable. So let's dedicate this. May the attention and sincerity and authenticity that we bring to this process serve you, Gaia. Serve the healing of our world and the welfare of all beings. So be it. Let's sound and go off to that point outside of time. point outside of time when generations separated by 200 years can come face to face those of you on the inside you are looking into the face of someone who actually lives in 2005 right in the middle of the great journey you can believe that those of you on the outside looking in, what you are seeing is a member of the seventh generation living in 2205. This being before you, you greet, I greet you, ancestor. It is amazing to me to be in your presence, ancestor. There are so many stories that we hear about the time of the great turning. I try sometimes to imagine what you all must have looked like faced with such an incredible situation. As a matter of fact, it still stays incredible to me, so I need to ask you. You see, our storytellers, they tell us that in the time you are living, that Bombs are being made 
that can blow up whole cities. They tell us that there are chemicals being produced while people know that they can cripple and kill and that they're still being made and put into water and food and soil. They tell us that there are people living in your time who are richer than the richest ancient kings and that there are billions of people without enough to eat with no fresh water. They tell us that. They tell us that there are whole species of plant and animal life going extinct. Oh, we we know about that. Gone is gone. But they tell us that you knew about it too at the time it was happening. So, Ancestor, my question to you is this. Is this true what they tell us? And if it is true, What's it like for you to live with that and know that? Can you tell me?